Hello everyone and thank you for joining me today. I'm going to use these cute little gnomes here that are from the July August 2021 catalogue, the Chilling With My Gnomies. And I'm going to make some backgrounds using some water and some blending and doing a couple of different things that I haven't shown before. The first one I'm going to show you is making a sunray background. Now what I'm doing for the two cards that I'm doing with the stencils is actually inking onto the stencil and then transferring it onto the panel. And then I'm going to show you a card using some printed vellum that we've got with the Distress Oxide inks. This is from a retired set and I really can't remember what set it's from, but I really do quite like this leaf pattern. So let's get started. I will move these out of the way because I'm going to be using water and I'll get the messy one done first. I've got a card panel here that is cut from our Distress watercolour paper, the Tim Holtz watercolour paper. It's nice and thick so it takes the water really, really well. Usually when we use a stencil, we put our paper down our stencil over the top and stencil through with our inks. Now a little while ago I saw Katie Donaldson Taylor do something similar to what I'm doing and I really quite liked it and I haven't actually tried it until now. For the first card I'm going to use mustard seed and spiced marmalade and I'm going to put my ink directly onto the stencil. I've already decided that I'm going to do this off center a little bit. So I want to bring in some of the spiced marmalade as well and blend that in. I don't have to worry about the colors being totally blended properly because I am going to spritz this with some water. I've got a cheap dollar shop spray bottle. I'm just going to activate all of the Distress Oxide inks. And this is the bit where it gets a bit runny because it is such a large area. I'm going to lift this up, bring in my card panel and then do a quick flip around with it to move the colours just a little bit. Bring this in. And put it down onto my card panel. And then all I need to do is lift that up. Before I clean it up, if you wanted to, you could get another piece of the watercolor paper and just do some random smooshing around to get different patterns. And now you can see why my fingers were a little bit messy to start with. And this bit's a little bit dry. So before I clean up totally, I'm just gonna wet that and activate it again. And add some more in. And that's ready to go or add some more color to for another card panel. And I can treat that a little bit more and I'll just put that aside in my stash to use on another project. What I'm going to do for the next card panel is the same sort of treatment. I'm going to use this image here and I'll bring in candied apple and peacock feathers because they match the watermelon and the clothes that he's wearing. And I'm just going to randomly add ink and then I'm going to hold this up and spray. Now I'm just going to do this off camera because I want to keep working with this and I don't want to get all this surface wet. I want to keep going and then I can just smoosh that down, run it around a little bit and bring in some more down in this part here. And then I'll bring in my 
heat tool and I'll dry that panel off before I use the peacock feathers. And do exactly the same thing, inking up the stencil rather than the paper. Now, what you could do is put a card panel or a piece of paper underneath this so that while you're inking, you'll actually get two pieces done at the same time. So the ink would transfer through from the stencil onto a piece of paper. I'm going to spritz this with water again. I'm just going to do that off camera. And then move it around a little bit so that it runs between all of these holes. Bring that in, smoosh it down, and then add some more over here. And then dry this panel off with the heat gun again. So I think this is going to look quite cute because to me, that little background just ties ties it all in. I quite like how that looks. So while I've got everything out and I'm all messy and everything, I'm going to bring in the third piece. Well, these are just some off cuts that I've got left and I just happened to have some strips and I couldn't bring myself to throw them away. So I am going to ink these up so that I can make a strip to put on a card panel. One side is a little bit whiter than the other, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter which one you use. I'm going to bring in mustard seed. And I'm going to make sure that when I do this, I put the mowed lawn on the same side. Because when I turn this over, you can see that the white from the leaves in the print really stand out. Whereas they get a bit lost on this side, I want the white to show. And then I'm going to bring in the mowed lawn and come in from the edges. I'm going with a green and gold because that's Australia's colours. And the gnome that I've coloured in is in green and gold. And we've just been madly watching the Olympics and really enjoying it. We're still under a lockdown with having people over and things like that. At least now we can go out for a meal or meet up with people, but we can't do workshops and things like that at home or at some venues. So I thought green and gold celebrating the Olympics would look really fabulous together. And here's the finished card. I've wrapped that panel around. This white panel here is actually cut at four by five and a quarter because I quite like having the white edges here. So that's simply wrapped around. The gnome is placed on top with foam tape and then I've slid a little sentiment in here that's from the same stamp set. And what I've done is just bent the corners of this up just to create a little bit more movement. With this panel here with the sunburst, I've actually cut that down to four by five and a quarter and I've popped it up on some fun foam. And I'm going to use this little gnome here. And that's what I mean with this being separate. You don't have to use this little windmill thing, but it's quite cute like this. And I've got a happy birthday sentiment that I'm just going to put across the bottom here. And then he's going to sit up on top of that. And I'm going to put some foam dots on the little windmill. But I'm going to attach his hand just with normal adhesive. So I want his hand to look like it's still part of this, but I want the windmill sitting up a little bit. And that's okay to do that. It just gives a little bit of dimension. And once again, I'm just gonna flick these up just a little bit. And that's that card panel done. So there are the two summer gnomes in their thongs with different looks and blending. And now we're going to do the watermelon guide. I've put a piece of candy apple trimmed at four by five and a quarter and that's popped up on foam tape and then I'm going to put this background down. 
So I'm going to pop this little dude up. And then I've got a happy birthday sentiment from the uh, birthday borders. So this happy birthday is this one and this is the happy birthday to you strip from here. So there we have our little watermelon guy all popped up on foam dots. I love that there are two different sizes in this packet. It makes it really quick and easy to put things together. I love the different looks you can get with the stencils by inking up the stencil rather than inking through the stencil. It really extends the use of the stencils and gives it a whole other level. And then you can just flip them over and use them like a stamp and press them straight onto your papers. Inking up any little scraps of printed vellum that you might have adds a whole other texture and layer to a card. And just by using a simple strip, it's a lovely feature on a card like this. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Stay tuned, I'll have some still shots up at the end if you'd like to have a look at those. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye for now.